We've had a lot of fun in business. We're going to do a little over 200 million this year, 700 employees. And we did go through private equity. Uh, I found a team that will allow us to scale because I still got a 10x this business now. And I'm going to go through some of the things that I had to do to create a business that uh, got a little over 20x EBITDA. So my book is called The Home Service Millionaire. It's how I lost a lot of money and uh, figured out a way to get back on top. And then the podcast is The Home Service Expert. And I contribute a lot to Forbes and Inc. I'm a regular contributor to those. So I want to talk a little bit about two things that'll scale your business. Have you guys ever heard of a guy named Joe Crisara by chance? He's a sales coach. Anybody know? Uh, first of all, he says your ego is not your amigo. So get your ego out of the way. But he says if you're not giving options, you're giving ultimatums. How many of you guys have six options for everything you do? Anybody? So basically, you're saying yes or no to anything. You're saying this is it. There's no other options. See, I always tell people apples to apples, I sell oranges. I come up with different parts. I trademark everything. And no one can compare anything to my stuff. And the other thing that I learned is financing is king. Gutters, you should be using financing. It should be 75% of your business. 75% of your revenue. How many of you have even 10% of your revenue through financing? It's like eight hands. So the question I always ask my clients when I get in front of them is, do you want to use your money today or should we use our money? And I never, ever, ever, ever call it financing. I call it promotions. Did you want to see if you qualified for one of our amazing promotions today? And then I go like this, ready? Did you want to qualify for one of our promotions? And they're nodding their head. I've never seen anybody nod their head like this and say no. So I always ask them yes questions. Did you want your garage door to be safe? Want to make sure it doesn't break again? Want to make sure everything's working correctly? I never say this is the highest cost. I say this is the best investment. I never say this is the cheapest option. I say this is the most economical. I never say sign the contract, they say, can you okay the paperwork? The little subtleties, we trained 40 technicians last month. 40 in one month. Each of these guys will be million dollar producers. And I always play this tango game of enough leads for enough technicians. So I'm hiring techs every month and I'm trying to get the leads. And it's called capacity planning. And when you're hiring as many people as we are, it's very, very difficult. We're in 20 states and 30 markets. So I know what you guys are going through, and if there's any mistake that's been made in life, I've made it. I promise you. I used to have people stealing toilet paper, so it doesn't get much worse than that. So here's the deal. Everybody's asking me, well, is the economy good or bad? You know, and I had uh, Goldman Sachs come into my office. A guy gave a two-hour speech about the economy and basically said it's about a 50-50. And I said, thanks. Thank you for this analysis. <laughs> and there was all kinds of charts and numbers and all global things going on, and I, it's still 50-50. All I know is I'm going to make the best of it. When life throws me lemons, I'm going to make lemonade. My mom and dad got a divorce when I was seven. My dad cheated on my mom. My dad hates that I tell people this. But he cheated on my mom, and my grandma uh, came to the house five days a week. And my sister hated men. And my mom had to work three jobs to save our house. She was a server, a bartender, and a real estate agent. And um, you know, I was on stage in front of 1,000 people a few years ago, and tears were coming out of my eyes telling the story. And I, I tell people, here's the real deal. My grandma's the best freaking cook in the world. My sister and I became best friends. My mom showed me what it was to work her ass off. My dad still showed up to every single football game and baseball game. And I wouldn't change a thing. I got two birthdays and two Christmases after that. So if the economy does go bad, I guarantee you one thing. I'm going to be the last man standing. We're more innovative. We smile more with our, I call them my coworkers. I don't treat them like shit. I'm available 100% of the time. I show up. And I think that that's important. So whether the economy goes bad, if it goes down, any billionaire will tell you. 
they make their money in a re recession or a depression. So if it goes bad, I promise you one thing. I've got a analytics on every single employee, every single department. I got them graded one out of 10. Xavier's a seven, so he's not sure if he's going to last. No, I'm kidding. It's my video guy. He's amazing. So I'm writing a book right now, and this book went a lot quicker than the first one, and it's called Elevate, Build a Company Which Everybody Wins, and it's built on five pillars. Leadership, culture, marketing, recruiting, and systems. And I, I consider marketing, recruiting as part of marketing. But I'll tell you what, if you can figure out these five pillars, I love culture. Th these are like my main things. I didn't write it about figuring out accounting, and by the way, if you do want to figure out how to save more money. Revenue is for vanity, profit is for sanity. Remember that? Read this book. Double Your Profits in Six Months or Less by Bob Pfeiffer. It's an old book, came out in the 90s. Double Your Profit in Six Months or Less, but the five pillars, this book is all about treating people like they should be treated. So when I have a hard conversation, there's three things I need to do as a company. I need to be able to have hard conversations, I have to have a plan that's written down and I need to be able to be a talent magnet. So when I have hard conversations, I try to focus on what's in it for you. So you tell me this, I'll peel back the onion and I'll say, what are your dreams, what are your goals, what do you want out of life? And people will be like, I just want to make more money and spend more time with family. That's what most business owners tell me. I'm like, yeah, I know, me too, everybody wants that. But how are you going to get there? How many leads? What's your conversion rate? What's your average ticket? How much does it cost you to acquire a client? They never ever know. A lot of the times what'll happen is, I'll say, what's your booking rate? And they say, uh, well, me and my wife handle the phones. It's gotta be 90%. I'm like, gotta be. And then I, I put analytics around it. They're booking at 52%. And then I say, what happened to that call? Oh, well, that's out of our service area. Why are you getting calls out of your service area? Something's broken and they don't even know what to be working on. They're like, what do I do? I, I don't know what to do. The business is tough. I say, I know it's tough. But if you don't have key performance indicators and have systems, you're never gonna be able to grow. So this is the book that's coming out. I didn't come here to uh, put you guys in a funnel and brag about the book, but it's gonna be a good book. Um, these four P KPIs, I go into hundreds of businesses. Right now I have 70 LO, well, non-disclosure agreements and hopefully turn into LOIs, letters of intent. These four KPIs that can fix any business. I want to show you guys something here. So I could take your average ticket, divide it by your conversion rate, divide it. So if it's 80%, divide it by 0.8. Divide it by your booking rate, it might be 85%, hopefully. And do me a favor, if you don't answer your phone, count that as a zero, as an opportunity. It's called abandonment rate. And you better count that. And then I look at my cost to acquire a customer. I take this formula, and I can figure out how to do 220 million this year. And then all I do is put more money into the, pour more fire on the, uh, or gas on the fire, I should say. That's the secret combo. I go into every business and I'll tell you, number three, the booking rate is where everybody's suffering. They don't even know it. They make excuses. They live in this gray area. And it's just not good. So if you could figure this out, we spent a fortune on, on I've got HubSpot, Service Titan, uh, Grow.com, which is a BI tool. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about AI here in a little bit. So Tom Howard was on my board of uh, directors, and, and I had him come in last week for a budgeting meeting. And it's so crazy that nobody knew their numbers. Nobody knew what they needed to hit. Nobody understood where they needed to go. And I was like, this is mind blowing, but I, I was there too, I promise. But do you have a written down plan? Or are you just like, I wanna make more money? And people are like, a lot of people say, write down your goals, but I know exactly what my conversion rate needs to be. I know what I have to spend on marketing. I've got systems for everything. I've got a ride along form for every guy that comes on board before he starts. Background check and drug tested. We fly them to Phoenix. We have two apartment complexes now. We've got brand new vehicles. I went to Mexico to figure out how we're going to get, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of vehicles a month. Uh, not a month, a year, per quarter now. So this was Tom Howard. I don't know if this is going to play. 
Yes. I've got a sales guy, Frank Sanchez. Frank would come to me asking for me for more leads every single day. And I'm like, dude, Frank was selling $5 million, $7 million a year in sales. He's making a 10% commission. So between $500,000 and $700,000 a year. He's always asking for more leads. He wants more money. Does he really want more money? He doesn't need the money. What he really wants for him personally was esteem and recognition. And he gets it when I give him more leads and more money. He loves to be the guy that has the most sales. He wants the whole company to know about it. I want to show everyone how good I am. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with Frank. Frank's a human. Giving him a raise or more leads or whatever is the most expensive way to give him the esteem and recognition he's asking for. But he doesn't know to ask you for esteem and recognition. He doesn't come in and say, hey, Tom, I could really use some more esteem and recognition right now. Your salesperson is not going to come in and do that. This is why, by the way, with your technicians, when they come and ask for a raise, especially when they're making $40, $50 an hour in some cases, they're not asking you for more money. What they're asking you for is esteem and recognition. They want you to say, you deserve a raise. I'm going to give you more money. Because when you say that, they get esteem recognition. Then guess what? Three months later, what happens? They're going to come again because they need esteem recognition. The only way they get it is by getting a raise. There's been tons of studies out there. They've actually found as soon as you get past a certain point, which is really like 65 grand, after that, you stop losing the incentive on there. And by the way, once you get past 270, they find no increase in happiness for any more money. Zero. So what I did with Frank, I was like, Frank, you want to come to lunch? He's like, yeah. Frank will drive across, all the way across Fresno, it's like 45 minutes, for free lunch. This guy makes half a million dollars a year personal income. But what he's really getting is he's getting the recognition he wants. I can tell you it's a lot easier than the raise he was asking for. Guess what? Frank stopped asking me for more leads. I was blown away. But he wanted esteem recognition the whole time. He didn't know it. All of us like recognition. A lot, a lot of us like to be noticed. We have a pinnacle club that all my top producers go on. And these guys, they want to go on this trip more than anything. More than anything in life, they want to go on this trip. All the managers go. It's kind of like a rite of passage. I don't understand. All we do is pay for them and their significant other to go on a great trip. We went to Cabo. Uh, tequila did not treat us well. But, uh, but it was a fun trip. And I'll tell you what. I, I interviewed my top two technicians out of 400 and some odd technicians. And Xavier, every single week, he edits me two interviews that go every Thursday morning. We have two meetings every day for 15 minutes. And then we have an hour long on Thursday. And I was interviewing Brandon Colby, and he goes, I said, what do you do? You're the most confident guy I've ever met. You smile to the client. And he goes, I'm just not afraid of zero. I'm not afraid. He goes, I'm the best MFer in the world at garage doors, period. And he believes it. And I believe I'm the best, so we got a big problem, me and him. But I said, what else do you do that's amazing? And I'm sharing this video, by the way, as I interview. One guy goes, the other guy, on Thursday morning, yesterday morning, he goes, Dude, all I do is smile. He goes, I have fun now. And he's smiling on the call, and he's, he's like, I really respect people. He's like, yes, sir, no, sir, absolutely, sir. And he goes, when I'm smiling, it's hard for people to get upset. And I said, your secret sauce is just smiling? He said, yes. One guy told me he, puts, he bought a pair of work boots instead of tennis shoes, and his tickets have doubled. I was like, dude, I'll buy you as many work boots as you need. So we interview these guys every week and we share this stuff. And it's just fun watching guys grow. They literally grow. So Brandon, the guy I was talking about, he was on a call. <laughs> he was on a call on Monday. And he calls me up, he's like, dude, I got a pretty big job now. I go, how, how is it? He goes, well, it's 20,000 on, on a service ticket. I go, holy shit, what'd you do? He goes, well, I work on every door. There's six doors here. I'm rebuilding everything and I'm putting new openers on them. And this dude, I mean, he, people give him TVs. They give him their old car. Like this guy gets the biggest tips I've ever seen. Like it's crazy. And it's crazy, the more we charge, the happier the customer. So you guys probably think otherwise, you're like, I think I gotta give somebody a good deal. What the hell's a good deal? I tell everybody this is an investment into your home and into your family. This is the number one ROI in the home, more than your kitchens or bathrooms. The garage door is a smile of your home. It's 40% of your curb appeal. By the way, if you guys know anybody selling a garage door business, call me. And if you haven't used A1, you should use A1. 
because we have systems for everything. It text messages the customer on the way. And I, told, I did a three hour orientation Wednesday morning. And I said, make sure you don't put your mug shot on the picture. Put a big smile and it text messages the client and says, my name's Tommy Mello. I love soccer. I love shooting pool, I love movies, and this is my dog Finnegan. People love four things they like to talk about. I call it form. Family, occupation, recreation, and material things. And what I practice with my technicians is, I practice asking questions. Ask me a question, what's your name? Brandon. Brandon, ask me a question. What's your favorite color? It's a great question, Brandon, why do you ask? See, I'm going to make him answer a question with a question, and you'll control the conversation. I do this with all my sales techs. They got to ask me, well, how much is that? Well, how much were you looking to spend today? I control everything by asking the questions, and I always ask. When I walk by the garage door, I'm looking at eight things. <laughs> I look every client up on Zillow to see when they sold their house. I look them up on Facebook to find out their favorite band. And then I look them up on LinkedIn to find out what they do. I mean, I'm a serious creeper. When I'm walking through the house, I'm looking to see if, what their, uh, their wall council uh, thermostat is. If they got a nest, I know they want a smart garage door. When I'm walking by the garage door, I look at the oxidation of the paint. I look for any dents or cracks. I knock on it real quick to see if it's a hollow back door. I look to see if they have a keypad. I look at the bottom rubber. I look at the, uh, what is it called? The, uh, the weather stripping, yeah, brain farting. A long night. And then I look at, is there a bedroom upstairs? And so I know more about any other, that there's nobody doing the things we're doing, the systems we have. And then I built a training center, it cost 800 grand. I've got a Harley Davidson in there, a real Harley. Because the deal is, the deal is I walk, I walk up to the Harley and one of my guys will be there and I'm gonna be like pretend motor. And he smiles and he goes, all right. And I go, dude! That's awesome, man. That's a Harley Davidson. Have you ever been to Sturges? Man, South Dakota's cool, huh? And if he doesn't light up, then I go on to the next thing. I play with the dog always. I always tell my guys, I've got two fake dogs. We've got to play with the dog. Don't have to play with the cats. <laughs> but it's crazy. Here's a real story for you guys. One of my guys owns six houses. He lives in Milwaukee. And... This lady's stone cold, right? This lady's like, I don't want to be outsold. Just do your job and get out of here. And he goes, all right, no problem, ma'am. Listen, I'm here to do my job. If I see anything that looks, looks alarming, do you want me to let you know? And she goes, no. She goes, I'd appreciate it if you did the job and get the hell out of here. And he's like, whoa, this lady's like stone cold. And he sees her cat. And he goes... Oh my God. He goes, I've got a beautiful little cat too. He goes, what's his name? And all of a sudden, he pulls out his screensaver and he's got a picture of his cat, his best friend. And she goes, she grabs his phone and says, what's his name? And they start talking about cats for 30 minutes. <laughs> and the lady just melts. She literally melts. And she goes, you're a cat lover? She goes, what does the garage door need? Can you really do that inspection? He walked out of there with one of the highest tickets of the year because he found a common connection. You know, I don't have any kids yet, but when I do have kids, I'll tell you what I'm going to tell my son. I'm going to tell him he's going to be 11 years old, sixth grade, and he's going to ask a girl to the dance, and I'm going to go, here's the deal, dude. you got to smile when you walk up, and she's probably going to say no. And don't be afraid of no. But you need to smile, you need to compliment her, make her laugh. Get her excited. And I said, she might say no today, but tomorrow's a new day. And you've got to be, you've got to follow up. And you've got to smile. Every day, look her directly in the eyes. And you tell her that you really think she's amazing. And you believe in yourself. I tell my technicians every day, I say, guys, you will believe in me because I love you guys. I literally will bend over backwards. I will do whatever it takes for you guys to win. You will believe in the trucks because they're brand new, they're amazing, they're the best. They're, they're amazing trucks. 
You'll believe in the tools because we spent $4,000 to give you guys the best tools in the industry. I know you'll believe in our parts because they're all trademarked. There's nothing else like them. Look up A1 Garage Door Max Life, so you'll see all of our trademarks. Real deal. I go, there's one thing I can't get you to believe in. I said, yourself. You gotta look in the mirror, you gotta smile, you gotta believe in you. And I said, here's the deal, guys. If you believe in you, I promise you, I promise you, if you got a will, I'm gonna find you a way. But I say, you gotta be able to walk in, you can't be afraid of no. No just means you're this much closer to yes. I asked my top guy in the company, how many no's did you get yesterday? And he goes, I didn't keep track, dude, but here's the deal, Tommy, I'm gonna go count today. He did $12,000 that day, he said I got 37 no's. I can only imagine him writing them down on his arm. 37 no's, he's not afraid of it. No, I mean no does mean no, but in this circumstance, it means educate the client. So this is our one-on-one -on -one form. I think it's one of the most powerful things. Jack Tester with Nexstar. They're, I think they're responsible for about 15 billion of revenue. And it says, what did we spend your time on this week? What was significant? If you're not using this form with every employee, you're failing yourself. Self. Observations, insights, or ideas. What are we not doing that we should be? What's the most important decision you're facing? Now, you should have this in advance, and they should take time to... I sound like I'm from Alabama. You should take time to go over this. Well, you know why the toothbrush was invented in Alabama, or wasn't invented in Alabama, otherwise it'd be called teeth brush. But anyways, screw that one up. So... What did we do well this week? What can we improve on? Now, hopefully, if you're really smart, you've got the guy's name, the marital status, his birth date, his goals, what he's tracking to do, everything that he wants in his life. And you say to this guy, you say, listen, Bill, we worked really hard together, didn't we? To come up with your dreams. You want to go to Disney World? You want to take your dad on a fishing trip next month? You said, you promised me you were gonna buy a house. And it's not my responsibility to dive into your personal affairs, but listen, this is serious now. And you asked me to hold you accountable. You told me you wanted a better life. And it's my job to be a man and man up with you today and tell you what we need to do. That's an easier conversation than a performance improvement plan. And you care, you give a big hug and you say, dude, instead of when he walks in, you go, dude, why is your number so poopy? See, there's a little guy here. So why do you got these poopy numbers? You go up to them and you give them a big hug and you say, listen, I noticed we're slipping a little bit. Is everything okay at home? When's the last time you asked your guys? When's the last time? I, I interviewed a lady. She's been doing this 38 years. And she said the number one reason why people stay is they form a relationship, a best friend at work. And they don't form it at work. They form it outside of work. So that's why we go bowling all the time. I'm sending up volleyball tournaments. We're going to, uh, we go uh, frisbee golf. Anything you can do outside of work and bonding with your people is going to make a huge difference all day long. So I, I, I'm a partnership guy. I, I, I believe what Lance said, you should be spending 10 to 15% of your, your budget on marketing, but also what you should be doing is networking. I'm speaking at Win the Storm. There's 7,000 people going to be there on March 15th. And people are like, what's Win the Storm? It's a, every time there's a fire or tornado, a hail storm. You, have any of you guys heard of Win the Storm? So every time there's an issue with it, any type of storm, weather, uh, earthquake, hurricane, these guys go knock on doors and they get the insurance company to cover the roofs usually. But here's what nobody knows the garage door gets hail damage too. <laughs> so I want to be the go-to guy in the nation for when there's a, a, an issue with the garage because you make all this money on the, the roof and the aluminum siding and the windows, but you don't make a lot of money on the garage until now because I know how to kind of fool, uh, well, the right way to quote on Xactimate because their quote on a garage door is 1,800. My door is eight, six grand, so 
we basically, we want every garage door, so that would mean an extra million jobs a year because no one else is doing it. It's too hard to figure out. A million extra jobs a year. We run 15,000 jobs a month. 15,000 homeowners a month. But now I just found a way to get another million. I mean, the relationships, the things that no one else wants to do, that's what I do. And I'm not worried about anybody coming in because they're never going to figure it out. So I use a company, my buddy Jody, it's his company, Rabbit Hire Pro, and people always ask, how are you able to get so many people? And it's all systematized. I'd say half of it is what they do because they go on social media, they post a lot. Jody Underhill is the man. And I've had a couple of people that I ended up partnering with. They said, Jody, his stuff doesn't work. And I said, well, I'm not sure what you're talking about because <laughs> that's... I've been hired anywhere from 30 to 50 technicians a month. And then I look at their ads. And I'll tell you guys this story real quick in the midst of this. I had 40 guys in a room, a lot smaller than this, and they, I said, who here is charging $10,000 for this garage door and opener? They all looked around at each other, and one guy goes, how do you sleep at night? And I said, how many of you guys have insurance and PTO and a 401k? There's no hands in here. I said that in this room. Well, I'm glad you do. And then I said, how many of you guys are on every billboard? How many of you guys have brand new vehicles? How many of you guys have 10 trainers? How many of you guys buy your guys the right tools? How many of you guys are allowed to make six figures plus? My average technician is making more than, more than 100 grand. So I said, none of you guys have all this, and you're criticizing me about what I, what I charge? How do you sleep at night? How do you hold people down? So you take advantage of your employees so you can charge your customers less? I go, you guys are POSs. I go, I, I'm really embarrassed that you guys, so the plumber and the HVAC guy can advertise everywhere, but you don't have the money? This is embarrassing. I said, you're mad because I charge enough to have new insurance for everybody? I pay for their Aflac. I buy them new vehicles. They are all homeowners? And you're bragging that you charge less? That's pathetic. You're a loser. You're a punk. And I'm not going to apologize for what I charge because I do it right. Every one of my techs are background checked and drug tested. And they show up in a brand new vehicle by the best brander in the world, which is Kit Charge. And there's no way I'm ever going to apologize that I'm more than your pathetic company. I am the most expensive, and I'm the best. And everybody in the country knows we're the best. And each one of them, they walked up to me, and they shook my hand and said, I'm raising my prices. Every single guy by the end of that. So I bought these two companies, and the minute I put my ads out, I bought my cousin's company in Colorado Springs the day I bought it. He goes, what did you just do? He goes, I've got 17 interviews. <laughs> I go, well, we pay our people right, and we respond. And it's not, it looks like a prison sentence when I read most people's ads. Must be only qualified if weekends, nights, blah, blah, blah. Have to have positive attitude, smile all the time. Must work 18 hours a day. I'm like, holy cow. I would never work for you. Man, that's like a prison sentence, seriously. So I say, if you love people and you enjoy a workplace that's going to lift you up every day, if you want to learn personality skills, eye contact, body language, how to motivate others, if you actually want to enjoy Mondays again, this might be for you. And right at the bottom, I say, by the way, we do garage doors. And I always put videos in my ads. So what I learned was, you know what the easy thing to do is? I need more leads. That's what everybody says, I need more leads. No, you don't. Your conversion rate is crap. You're not booking every phone call. Your average ticket is pathetic. Losers need more leads. Unless if I looked at all of your KPIs, and I'm not calling you guys losers, I want to be very clear. Everyone in here is a winner. But I want to look at your key performance indicators and I want to understand if there's more money there. Because the easy thing is to say I need more leads. 
You realize if a CSR is booking at 60% versus 90%, they're taking 20 calls a day, 20 opportunities a day, and they average tickets only $500, you're losing about $1.4 million a year. One, flipping out one CSR. See, we get so mad at our technicians. We get so mad when they leave with a zero, but your CSR just lost five jobs. And you say, well, we pay her $14 an hour, Margaret's amazing. My CSR is making an average of 28 bucks an hour. Why? Because it costs me an extra million if I don't. One A player runs circles around three B players. Re remember that, you pay somebody $15, I pay them 30, she's worth 45, I'm saving money. The problem is if you just go on Indeed and Craigslist and Monster and Career Builder, those people are unemployed. They're losers. I go where the winners hang out. They've already got a job. The average person spends two and a half hours on social media. People, every single day, they're like, dude, I saw your video online. That place can't even be real. Do you guys actually do all that fun stuff all the time? I'm like, I wouldn't do it if I didn't literally. I just bought. We got this big like, uh, thing for fish, and it's little minnows, and it's called minnow racing. You squirt them. I don't know why. I just thought it was cool. <laughs> and those are the kind of stuff. Look, look, we do so much. I just bought this buzzer thing. It's a hot potato, and it buzzes you. I'm like, I, I got to have these guys play it. One day, I had a hot sauce contest, and the ambulance showed up. <laughs> That's not a good idea, but we do fun stuff all the time. So I believe in what Jody does, and I'll tell you this. I want you guys to real quick pull out your phones. Can you do me a favor? Can you look up your company in either, either Glassdoor or Indeed? And then look up A1 Garage Door Service. Where do you think people are looking you up? Your customers are on Google, Yelp, and Nextdoor, but your internal customers, my coworkers, they go on Indeed and Glassdoor, and they're looking at you. I don't care if they were a referral. I don't care what you think. You want to figure out a way, find your employees that have been there 90 days or more and call them up personally and text them. And then when I text them and show them a link, I send a question mark every day for two weeks. And they end up doing it. And because they know I'm watching, I don't think they're going to leave anything less than a five. I've had one. And I called them up and I said, sorry for not being a five-star leader. And it was a four-star. <laughs> he changed it to a five. So keep an eye on that. That's where people go to find you. So I want to tell you guys, so here's what happened. Cortec announced this growth partnership, capital partnership with A1 Garage Doors. I had a delay draw term loan for 25 million and I was burning through this buying companies. So. My president of the company said, hey, man, I want you to go find some companies to buy. Well, I found 80. He was like, dude, stop. What happened? How'd you do that? And I said, well, you told me to find some companies. And he said, we don't have enough money to even buy five of these with our loans, so we're going to need we're gonna need to do something here. And, and Tom Howard flew into town, and he said, dude, he goes, I know I told you to never, ever, ever sell your business. I mean, look, we've always had 12 to 15 million in our account. I own a lot of real estate, I'm not bragging. This isn't cool, I don't care. But I always was okay. I've always saved money. And we just came up with this opportunity and I said we could 10X this business. We went through a lot of crap to figure all this stuff out. And I just wanna tell you guys, if you don't have systems, if you don't have a deep bench, if you don't have a great CRM, if you're not doing the marketing correctly, uh, if you don't have the right team, this is me and uh, Eric Van Dam. Cowan was the guy that did it. That's in Royal Oak, Michigan. I, uh, there we go. And I called Cowan up. I called this guy up. And I, don't, I don't know how. I never look at LinkedIn, but I think God and Jesus told me to open my computer that day. And first time I've been on LinkedIn in that forever, even though I have 25,000 connections. I go on and I see this message and Eric says, hey, I've happened to be involved with all the big deals in HVAC. And I remember I called him 
And we talk for three hours, and I'm writing down every big deal. I'm like, holy cow, holy cow, that can't be right. And he's going through it, and he says, hey, man, he goes, I got to talk to you about your leadership team a year later. He goes, I think you need to do this, 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 and here's the girl who will recruit for you. Her name is Blair. And listen, I, I, don't, I don't make any money on this stuff, but if you, want, if you guys want to find a real leader, I probably shouldn't give you her number, but I'm going to. Blair saved my life, literally. So Blair, her name's Blair Miller, Miller, and her number is 248-515-3520. And she's the best recruiter I've ever met. It's uh, 248-515-3520. And she brought me Dan Miller over there to the left. So Dan Miller came out as the president. He moved a bunch of things around. He got two VPs of corporate development. We got a fleet manager. He built this huge bench. He knew exactly what the PE guys wanted. By the way, these guys are cooler than I ever expected. They let me be the CEO and run the company. I'm now an employee, apparently. I don't feel like it. But uh, Dan Miller's the man. That's Adrian in the middle. Adrian's the, one of the sharpest CFOs. We used to give the guys the tools that they lasted for 90 days. Adrian switched it to three years and added three million of EBITDA. Three million of EBITDA by changing how we give it to our guys. What's three million times 20? He paid his way, <laughs> 60 million. So that's Jim Leslie. Jim Leslie's my CTO. He's like my personal savant. He's just, he's a wrecking ball. He could do anything. He's the smartest guy I've ever met. And he's a hard worker, man. He works nights, weekends. I call him up. He lives in Pittsburgh. I call him up in the middle of the night, literally. And he's like, dude, are you going to keep me up all night? Because two days ago, you got up at 4 in the morning. And now you're going to bed at 4 in the morning. He goes, what? I need you to address my sleep. <laughs> so I built the A. These guys are A-list. They're not. All these guys are 14 months or less. And when I figured out the secret sauce of what their high skills were, and I set them loose. You know, when, when Dan came on, he said, I'm going to come on six months as a consultant. We're going to see if we can work together. And I watched him hire lawyers. He sat with 22 lawyers on the PE deal. He wore a black shirt. He looks like a bouncer in a black T-shirt. I think he took his wheat, ate his Wheaties that morning. And he did not flinch. He looked at all their questions, and he said, yes, we're working on that. Here's exactly what's going on. I was like, dude, I got a question. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'll refer to Dan on that. So I did an equity incentive program. I gave 20% of the company away at a $50 million floor. So all of us knew we were running at the same goal. And it was crazy how hard everybody worked into this, this company. Everybody walked away from this deal. Two people got let go that, that had a, a, a stake at the uh, table. And it wasn't me. I, I don't know how to fire people. I'm not good at it. But Dan dealt with it. And what I could tell you is we made 25 millionaires in the process, and that happened on December 22nd. 25 millionaires and their whole lives have changed. And I'll tell you what, they text me on a weekly basis, weekly, and they say, we're indebted to you forever. And I'm like, listen, you've earned everything you've got. And it's so fun when you get to watch other people win. It changes the whole thing when you get to watch them and their families and watch people buy homes and winning and having kids and bringing beautiful, amazing people into this world. Your whole life begins to have a bigger meaning. And I get these dopamine and serotonin shots every time I see somebody that says, I just went into escrow on a home. And a lot of people cry. They cry to me. And they tell me, I thought this was too good to be true, and now it's true. You show up, you're there, and that to me, there's no amount of people. My mom always asks me, she goes, Tommy, when is enough enough? Why do you always want more? I said, I got more people to help, Mom. I'm kind of like Peter Parker. With great power comes great responsibility. So everybody's talking to me about AI. I've got a whole team of VAs that's going to be working in Arminia. And we're using ChatGPT. I, I got a phone call from this kid. He's like, listen, my buddy's a developer. He's 18 years old. He's, he's a savant. So I meet up with this kid. I go, here's what we're going to do. 
I mean, the dude is super smart, 18 years old. He goes to ASU. And I said, I want to build, every time I buy a company, I want to be doing outreach via text message, email, LinkedIn, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. And he's like, all right, that'll take two weeks to build. And he's working on it right now. I said, every time I get an employee, which I call a coworker, I want a GB, GBT, <laughs> I want this AI to go out and find all their friends, neighbors, and family, and we're gonna do a garage door tune up for them. I said, every time we don't sell a job, I want an ongoing message reaching out, two outcomes. Either it lands on Schedule Engine, which is our automatic booker, or it gets a Calendly link and booked on someone's call. I'm telling you guys, when you guys are trying to figure out how to play checkers, a lot of people are playing chess. And if you guys aren't paying attention, everybody thinks they got time, I'll never sell, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care. If you're not building a company to sell, read the book Built to Sell by John Warlow. Every company should be built to sell. Either you're going to die, you're going to sell, or you're going to give it to your kids. There's only, only three options. So hopefully, you get to make some money and do some cool stuff. I call it freedom. Do what you want, when you want, with who you want. And here I am here, because I love Bren, wherever he's at. Uh, but this is the real deal, man. I mean, look, I pay anywhere from $1,600 a month, a month for a master's degree in Armenia. $1,600 bucks. The guy's got a master's degree. They got 300 of them work for Service Titan. And whatever I could do, outsourcing, I'm doing. Because I don't pay. I, you know, as, as much as you guys not, might, might not like this, I really don't care. Uh, I don't have to pay insurance, even though I love every one of my people. And they all have 401ks. And they all have PTO. And they all have a gas card. And it goes on and on. So if I'm able to get VAs, these people work 12 hours a day and they, they, like, they love it. They've never made this much money in their lives. So if you're not taking advantage of AI and virtual assistants, I tell you to read the four hour work week, but it doesn't exist. So we, we bought this company, uh, well, what time is it? Is it 10.45? Yeah, Lance went late. My, that's why my calculator was off in my brain. So we bought this company called Don's Garage Doors, right? And these guys literally sat in the room with me and they, one guy starts crying. He goes, I don't think I should trust you. He goes, I got burnt so bad at Don's. He goes, why should I believe in you? Then I said, listen, I show up here every day. I grind. I work my ass off, man. I will do whatever it takes for you to succeed. If you got a will, I'm going to find a way. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. I won't fail you. You want this? You, we, we'll get it together. And I called him every night, and he called the other guys, and we got on group calls. And Don's, the number one excuse, what they wanted. The number one thing that Jody told me every one of the guys asked when I interview, he interviews the first interview, do you guys have new vehicles? Do you have new trucks? That's the only thing this guy cared about at Don's, because he was broke down five times a year. And you guys are trying to get a cheaper deal on a used 2006 Pinto. I use accelerated depreciation. I show up in a brand new vehicle. That's a write-off, baby. I mean, listen, I bought a bunch of new buildings. I use a cost segregation study because I've got more tax advisors than probably 10 of you combined. And I'm not bragging about it, but I'll tell you this. Everything I do is legal. The law was made for these things. I use what's called the Augusta Rule. Look up the Augusta Rule. You could stay at your house and have meetings and write it off for two weeks. These are the things that I don't think anybody wants to tell you <laughs> because you're gonna get too rich. It's amazing what you can do in this world if you just take care of people. You look out for one another. You want to win a little more. I decided when we did the deal to give $2 million out and we, we based it on 10 year day one. So everybody got pretty massive bonuses. Some guys got 30 grand. And I decided I wanted to buy a knife, a Cutco knife for all of them. So I engraved each one, not myself. I didn't sit there and grind it. But uh, this is a, one more video. This, this little act of kindness, I had no idea that we would set a record the day everyone got, the day after they got the knives. 
I had no idea it would be our best war week in the company's history. I didn't know that people would call me crying, their wives would call crying, some of the parents were crying. They said, nobody's ever taken the time to even acknowledge us. And it's these little things, and I'm almost done, Brent. I know I, I want to keep your, your, your event here on time, so. Question I, Question I get all the time seems to be, what do you do for the employees? How do you attract employees? How do you keep employees? We do the 401ks, we do PTO, we give them their brand new truck, we train them from scratch, we give them the tools. What I realized was, it's not something that reminds them where they were. I want to show them a little bit more gratitude, and I had an opportunity. I had an equity partner come on. Yeah, these guys are amazing, and I'm so happy I did this. And we gave out bonuses to every employee. We also decided to write them a handwritten letter for me and took the time to really make sure it was heartfelt. And then sent them a Cutco knife because it's a great knife. It also sits on their countertop, the square foot of their home. That's the most precious. It's what they see every day. And it doesn't say anything about A1 garage door service. That's not what we try to do. I can't even explain the result. The employees feel... They're like, dude, I'm going to work for you forever. And we had lots of employees in tears. All I can say is, wow, Tommy, you have outdone yourself. As if a bonus wasn't enough, you had to go out and do this. I appreciate you and the people that you've teamed up with to make A1 a place to call home more and more each and every day. And for providing for my family and building a company with heart and soul, not just a place to call work, a place where we can impact our customers and coworkers alike. Thank you. A1 from day one. And it doesn't need to be a gift all the time. Maybe a phone call works. Just showing people that you care. I love to help people. But this is something so much more than that. It's something that they're going to use, enjoy. And I really want to be the best version of myself and show up to each and every person in this company. So your dream's got to be big enough that all your coworkers get to fit inside. Hopefully you dare people to dream a little more. You dare people to want more for their lives, more freedom to do what they want, when they want, with who they want. I pray for each and every one of you that you just, you want a life of abundance. You're going to ask the ability to want more. My attitude, I dream bigger than anybody I've ever met. I don't think I'm going to do a billion. I think I'm going to do 20 billion in four years. And it's not a joke. It's real, man. <laughs> I felt like that was my Biden moment. Um, <laughs> but listen, you guys write your number down. If you want to do a billion dollars, I want you to get on a whiteboard and I want you to write a billion dollars. And I want you to write a line all the way to the bottom left of the whiteboard. Figure out how long you need. All my technicians, I'm getting them to, the average technician did about 500 grand, so I needed 2,000 technicians. And then I reverse engineered how many calls I needed. Then I figured out how many CSRs, how many vehicles, how many iPads I needed. Then I figured out what I needed the software to do and the trainers I needed and recruiters I needed. And then I started that day. Not that month, not that quarter, not that year. I started working that day. And I called all my managers in and I said, hey guys, we're gonna do a billion dollars. And at first they laughed and they walked out of there and they were skipping, they're like, we're gonna do a billion. They were like, he, he, it's a simple math equation. I need this many leads, this average ticket, this much training. When I played football, I worked two, worked out twice a day, six days a week to play one game for three hours. In home service, we say, here's my best guy, ride along, learn all the crap, learn all the good stuff, the bad stuff, ride along for him for two weeks, and then we're done training you forever. I think of things like football. I met Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald said, hey man, I worked with Kurt, Kurt Warner, Looked at me in the locker room. He took me against the wall afterwards, and he said, hey, man, I'm not passing you the ball anymore. I'm done. I can't trust you, man. And he goes, what do you mean you can't trust me? I'm the best athlete on the field. I could jump higher. I've got longer reach. He goes, yeah, but you don't run the play perfectly. He goes, you're not running the play. You're running 12 yards instead of 10, and I can't trust you anymore. So after that day, Larry Fitzgerald became his best version of himself. And they, they kicked ass, man. It was, those guys were unstoppable. And we practiced the play every day. We practiced eye contact, bilingual, was the right words to say. And I tell my guys, listen, my mom worked three jobs. I tell every client this, my mom worked three jobs. She's the favorite woman in my life. She was bartending. 
She was serving tables, and man, she'd come home with blisters on her feet from those high heels because she was a real estate agent all day long. She sold 52 houses her best year. She, we got to keep our house in Sterling Heights. We always had a good Christmas. One year, the church came and helped us. But this is what I would do for my mom. I love my mom. This is how I treat my mom. This is the option I'd give my mom. And people look at me into my eyes, and they believe me because it's exactly what I would do for mom. And what I would tell you guys is teach you guys to treat everybody like mom. And dare to dream a little bit bigger, guys. That's all I'm asking you to do is don't be content with a million dollars a year. Don't be content with a hundred million. Ask for more. If you've got a bigger dream, if you find out a way, you're only, if you want to do five million, that's fine. But dream a little bit bigger. Want more for everybody. And pay your people more. They deserve it. If you guys want to uh, reach out to me, if you want to come check out the training, how we do things, the ride-along process, how we buy our tools, how we get our trucks from Mexico. It's pretty cool. I learned a lot. I, I learned a lot from traveling. But if you want to see some funny stuff, follow me at official Tommy Mello at TikTok. And uh, I really appreciate being here. Seriously, if you guys need anything, if you want anything, any questions you ever have, I'm here. I want to help you. It's truly coming from a point of helping others. And thank you for letting me speak here today. I appreciate it, guys.